The next topic that we're going to talk about is uh, writing balanced redox reactions from a word problem. So something that we need to know before we can jump into doing this and, and doing the rules that I've got up here on the board is you need to go into your data booklet and turn to page seven. And so this, this table looks something like this. And what this is, is if you look at the very top, this says that it's a table of selected standard electrode potentials of a reduction half reaction table. And so essentially this is just a table of reduction half reactions. Now, the important thing to note about this is that all of these reactions are listed in order of strength. So these are a whole bunch of reactions that show substances gaining electrons. That's what reduction is. If you look at the very top, the, the reduction half reaction that it's at the, that's at the very top is a reduction half reaction of fluorine gaining two electrons. And if you remember from Chem 20, fluorine has a really, really high electronegativity. And what that means is that fluorine really loves electrons, really likes to gain electrons, and is very good at gaining electrons. And so if fluorine here is really good at gaining electrons, then it would seem natural for us to put that at the top of the table. And so if we look at all of these other substances all the way down the side here, what we've done is we've ordered them in order of strength. So the one that's underneath of fluorine is slightly less good at gaining electrons than fluorine is, and so on down the chart. Now because fluorine F2 gains electrons, that makes it an oxidizing agent. And so what we can do on this chart over here is if you want to take in, in your booklet, make sure that you write down that you have up here in the top left hand corner, the SOA, this is the strongest oxidizing agent. And then it, all the oxidizing agents become weaker as we move down the chart. Now, if F2 is really good at gaining electrons, that means that F minus is really terrible at gaining electrons. Conversely, if we move down the chart here, we can see lithium ion, which gains electrons, is at the very bottom of this chart, which means it's very terrible at gaining electrons, which means then that lithium solid would be very good at, gain, at losing electrons. So while our strongest oxidizing agent is up here in the top left-hand corner of the, of the page, down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, this is where our, we are gonna find our strongest reducing agents. And what you can notice from our last lesson when we wrote out oxidizing agent, ox, oxidation half reactions and reduction half reactions, a reduction half reaction and an oxidation half reaction are just the opposite of each other. So I could write these reduction half reactions like you see in the table here like this, or I could write them all backwards and those would all be oxidation half reactions. So all of these substances on this chart over here on this side are all reducing agents. They're being oxidized. My strongest reducing agent is down here in the bottom right hand corner and they get, they get weaker as I move up the chart. So that's how this table is set up. We're gonna use this table when we are writing re redox reactions from word problems. So here are the rules that you need to, to pay attention to and these rules you would have to have memorized for an assessment that we would do uh, on this topic. First, you need to list the species present. Then you're gonna identify the strongest oxidizing agent from that list and you're going to identify its half reaction in this chart here. You're also going to do that for the strongest reducing agent and identify its half reaction in this chart, making sure that when you write this oxidation half reaction that you are writing not the reaction that's found in this chart, but the opposite, the backwards version of that because it's an oxidation, not a reduction. And then you're going to balance the electrons and write out the full complete redox reaction at that point. So let's do an example over here. Uh, that I've got written on the board. So this one says that we've got an aqueous solution of potassium permanganate, and you can see what's, what it's reacting with, and uh, as you're reading through it, you wanna go through these rules. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna list the species present. So I'm just gonna slowly go through this sentence with you guys and write out the species that are present as I come to substances that I'm reading. So the first one says that I've got an aqueous solution. So aqueous, I know, 
means that water is present. So I'm going to write water as, my, as part of my list. And when you're writing your species present, you must always include states of matter appropriately for each substance. So I've got water. Then it says that I have potassium permanganate. Now remember, it says it's an aqueous solution of potassium permanganate, which means potassium permanganate is aqueous. It's dissolved. And if it's dissolved and it's an ionic compound, if you remember from Chem 20, that substance is going to dissociate into its ions. And so it's not going to be KMNO4 aqueous. It's going to be potassium ions, K-positive aqueous, and MNO4 minus ions aqueous. And how many of them we have doesn't matter. I'm just listing a, a, a list. I'm just making a list of species present in the solution. So I'm not worried about amounts at this point. So there's my list so far. As I carry on, it says that it was reacted with an acidic solution. So acidic means that it's in the presence of acid. And I know from Chem 20 again that in the presence of acid, we have H plus in the solution. Acidic solution of sodium bromide. Again, another ionic compound that's in solution. So I'm going to write it out as its ions. And then it says that an orange-brown substance was formed. This is just to help you uh, identify whether you've done the reaction correct or not. You should have some sort of substance that's going to be an orange-brown color. That's not something you need to have memorized, but just a little bit of an extra added hint in the, in the question to see if you've done it right or not. So what I'm going to do at this point now is I've got my species listed. From this list alone, I'm going to identify what is my strongest oxidizing agent and strongest reducing agent. So in here, I'm going to start at the top left-hand corner and look for my strongest oxidizing agent. And as I move down, you'll notice in the, the third reaction right here from the top is this reaction that has MnO4- and H+, as reactants. And I have both of those present here in my list. So this is a reaction that I can use. I don't have anything else other than that in this list that's higher on the chart than that. So that's my strongest oxidizing agent. My strongest reducing agent as I search, and this is a bit of a, a treasure hunt. You gotta kind of look around and find what's the lowest on the chart for the strongest reducing agents and what's highest on the chart for the strongest oxidizing agents. But as I look on, on this chart here, and I'm, I'm scrolling from the bottom towards the top is I'm looking on here for what is my strongest reducing agent. And it turns out that uh, as I come near the top, I get to Br minus. And that's the first one on my list here that I can see that's on the right hand side of the arrow. So that is, while it's not a very strong reducing agent, it is on my list the strongest reducing agent that I have. And so that's going to be my strongest reducing agent. I'll label that. Some kids with a question like this, they'll look and they'll say, well, but what about this K solid down here at the very bottom? That one's a really strong reducing agent. Why is this not your strongest reducing agent? And the answer to that is you have to be careful in that ions and elements are two different things. On the chart here, it says K-solid, and I don't have K-solid, I have K-positive aqueous. Those are two different substances, and so while, yes, it's the same atom in that it's a, an atom of potassium, one is an ion and the other one is an element, and so you'll notice that this K-solid is an element on the right side. That's not what I have. I'm not going to choose that. So at this point, what I'm going to do then is I am going to write out what my reduction half reaction is and my... Uh, oxidation half reaction and just copy it out of the book the way that it's written noting that for my reducing agent I need to make sure that I'm writing that reaction backwards so that it is an oxidation half reaction not a reduction half reaction There's 
my reduction half reaction for my oxidizing agent that I've identified. Next up is the bromine. So there's my oxidation half reaction. Notice that my reduction half reaction has the electrons on the reactant side and my oxidation half reaction has the electrons on the product side. So now at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to balance the electrons out. And you can see that these electrons here are not the same. Uh, what I have to do is I have to pick uh, the lowest common multiple that exists for those two numbers so that if I have a substance that's gaining this many electrons that the substance that's losing the electrons is losing the same amount. And, and so the lowest common multiple between these two numbers is 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this reaction by 2 to make it so that I have 10 electrons. And I'm going to multiply this reaction by 5 to make it that I've got 10 electrons over there. So I'm going to change these numbers. And now you can see I can take these electrons and I can cancel those out. And then everything else that I've got on the reaction, none of it cancels. So I'm just going to write out what I have left over. And that's going to be my net redox reaction or my net ionic equation. And the problem's done. Oh, I got one more here, plus Mn. <clears throat> that is two positive, and I have two of those there for my reaction. That's on the reactant side. It's ran out of space there. A couple of extra things that I need to add in as it relates to listing the species present when you're writing these balanced equations is uh, couple of things to look for in the written problems and what you need to uh, make sure you're doing when you're writing these lists. First thing is, is that if the substance is not aqueous, then don't split it up into its ions. If it's not an ionic aqueous compound, it doesn't dissociate. So if the substance says that it's, or if the problem says that the substance is solid, then leave that compound as a solid and that is part of your list. If the substance gives you a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, for example, strong acids, remember, ionize 100%. And so when I put those into solution, those are going to break up into H plus and Cl minus. And that would be part of your list, and you would write it like that. You would not write hydrochloric acid like this, you would write it like this when you're listing your species present. If you have a weak acid like carbonic acid, <clears throat> unlike strong acids that ionize about 100% or near to it, weak acids ionize most of them less than 1%. And so when I'm writing my species present, uh, even though we can write ionization equations for this, and we did this in Chem 20, we don't write these as part of my species listed when we're doing those problems. And the reason why is because 99% or more than 99% of the weak acid stays as this compound, as H2CO3. So when I write my species listed and I have a weak acid as part of the problem, I need to write just the weak acid that I have there, H2CO3, and leave it at that. I'm not going to write these substances here as part of my list. So that's a little added information that you need in order to do some of the problems.